the Edexcel Further Pure 1 Maths A Level Syllabus. This is the second video on coordinate systems and in this video we uh, learn a, a simple skill i.e. how to convert from parametric to Cartesian form. Now looking at the scheme of work, nothing explicitly says here that we have to be able to do this but the questions involve this skill so it's a simple skills exercise video. Right, um, just to recap, what's Cartesian form? What's the Cartesian form of an equation? Well, you should be aware from the last video that we have usually, in the past, written uh, functions in Cartesian form, and that's usually in the form y is equal to some function of x, y is the subject of the formula expressed as a function of the variable x. Or you can have equations uh, where y is not the subject, but there are just x's and y's and no other variables. For example, um, y is equal to f of x, that type of uh, situation, e.g. y equals x plus 2. And then we were introduced in the last video to parametric form. That is when our x and our y coordinates are expressed in terms of another variable, a third variable, usually t. And t is called the parameter. An example of uh, x would be some function of t, like x is equal to f of t y would be some, up, some different function of t, and here's an example we dealt with in the previous video, x is 2t squared and y is 4t. So that's Cartesian and parametric form. In this video, we are going to um, try and convert from parametric to Cartesian form. If you were given the parametric form of an equation, would you be able to find the Cartesian form? Well, it's a very simple exercise in algebra. The aim of the game here is to eliminate t's. So our aim is to eliminate t's so we have an equation with just x's, y's and numbers. So one easy thing to do would be uh, from one of the equations make t the subject. So for example, you can maybe if I call that equation 1 and that equation 2, we could say from, let's say, equation 2, you could say that t is certainly uh, y divided by 10 rearranging this equation here. And then if you substitute it into equation 1, you would have x is equal to 5t squared, so 5 and then y over 10 squared, substituting for t, so x would be equal to 5 y squared over 100, simplifying x would be equal to y squared over uh, 20, and then rearranging, maybe making y squared the subject, y squared would, would equal 20x. And that's it, you'd be done. You could take square roots to make y uh, the subject on its own, but it's fine to leave it like that. That would be a decent Cartesian form. So, to convert from parametric to Cartesian, you eliminate t's. Usually a nice easy way of doing that is to make t the subject of one of the formulae and then substitute into the other one. Right, let's have a go at another example, then I'll let you do one yourself. Example 1. A curve has parametric equations, x is equal to at squared and y is equal to 2at. t is your parameter and a is just a constant. a is like a number like 5 or something like that. In this case, we're using a to stand for any number. But a is not a variable, x and y are your variables and t is your parameter. a, like I said, is a constant. Find the equation of the curve. Right, let's write down our equations. x is equal to at squared, equation 1. y is equal to 2at, equation 2. You can rearrange equation 2 and you can say t is the subject. t would therefore be y divided by 2a. And you could call that, for example, 3. And you could substitute 3 into 1 and you would have x is equal to a multiplied by t squared, which would be y over 2a squared. x would be equal to a, therefore multiplied by y squared over 4a squared. x would then be equal to one of the a's here, there would be an a on top, and cancels with 1a here. x would therefore be y squared over 4a, and making y squared maybe the subject, y squared would therefore be 4ax. And you have found the Cartesian form. You could square root, but there's no need. It's fine like that. 
there's your Cartesian form. Okay, one for you to try yourself, a different parametric set of equations with a's in them again, um, a is just a constant, um, eliminate t and try and get the uh, Cartesian form of the curve. In 10 seconds I'll go through. Okay, so there were two parts. Part A, you would write your first equation, x is equal to ct. C here is the variable, uh, is the constant even, not a like in the previous case. y is equal to c divided by t. t is our parameter. That's equation 1. That's equation 2. Um, either one of these work. Why don't we make t the subject from this one? t would equal c divided by y. Okay, rearranging that. And we might call that equation 3. And we would sub 3, substitute 3 into equation 1, where you have x is ct, which would be c, multiplied by c over y. So therefore, x would equal c squared over y. And you could just multiply both sides by y, let's say. Uh, you could multiply both sides by y and divide both sides by the x to make y the subject. y would therefore be c squared over x. And that's your Cartesian form. Now, part b, what does that look like? Well, c squared is just a number. It's a positive number because it's a square. It's just a number, like 1 over x or 4 over x. We know that graphs of the form 1 over x or 2 over x and that sort of thing, they look like this, something like that. So certainly, this graph here would look something like that. We don't know what the value of c is, um, but it doesn't matter. We know the graph looks something of that form and we'll be done. And that's all there is for this particular skill to convert from parametric to Cartesian form. So, to consolidate the work we've done, read pages 42 to 45, do exercise 3a, question 4, 5 and 6, then tune in for the next video on parabolas. Thank you for watching.